Uh, let's open with prayer. Uh, dear Lord Jesus, we thank you again for the opportunities you give us to study your word. As we study the fifth commandment today, we see the wisdom that you offer to us there, uh, namely uh, the protection of life. Um, and when we think about murder, uh, you tell us how it is very wrong. Uh, continue to be with us to help us keep the fifth commandment and uh, to help our neighbor uh, to the best of our God-given ability. Uh, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, uh, let's take a look. What is the definition of a table? But before we do that, first question. I know it kind of might seem awkward. Uh, let's read through the fifth commandment. Um, you shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and befriend him in every bodily need. If you were to say, our nation needs a lot of this, do you think it would be more of keeping the fifth commandment? Do you think that would rank at the top of all the commandments? You mean what our, what our nation needs? Right needs now? more of right now. Do not hurt or harm your neighbor. Well, we're a very polarized nation, so I guess it would fit with that. Yeah. Uh, and eighth I think, commandment too. yep, absolutely. Fifth commandment, eighth commandment. <laughs> there are a lot of them. Um, you know, God has these here for a blessing. So how can we keep our neighbor um, and protect him from bodily harm? And our neighbor isn't just the person that lives next to us or the house next to us. Uh, when this question was asked of Jesus, you know, who is my neighbor? Um, who did he identify? Uh, everyone. Right. Think of everyone as your neighbor and yeah, all humankind, uh, even my enemies, Lord. Uh, he was asked at another time. Yes. Pray even for your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. OK. Uh, so very first question, um, what is the definition of a table? Could be a piece of furniture, or it could be like a table of contents, that kind of thing. I'm sure there's probably two or three different definitions. Okay. Yeah. If, and if we were to Google it right now, we'd get that very thing. Um, it's something that you use for eating on. It's something that you use to write on. Uh, it's any one of those things. Now, the point, though, is this. When you think about a table, a table is one of many things that God created. Um, God created everything um, in this universe, and everything comes from him. Um, he created you and I. And when we think about... Um, Did he create tables? Um, the resources for it. But yeah, everything, man, everything you see. He's given man the ability uh, to create it. The, the resources that come to make up this table. You know? um, so, very good. Now, how do you know you are not hurting or harming, but helping and supporting your neighbor? When you look at the fifth commandment, how do you know that you're not hurting or harming, but helping and supporting your neighbor? What, by what you say to them. Okay. No, if it's something that uh, is going to sway other people against them or gossiping, on, okay. destroying their reputation. Yep. This is a more able, but. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, bringing, bringing bodily harm uh, to your neighbor, putting them into. Um, harm's way. Uh, we could think about that when we put other people into harm's way by our own actions. So like in our society right now, we think about texting and driving um, is, is just a big point, right? You're, you're putting someone else in harm's way. You're putting your own children or your own life in harm's way. Very self-defense defense to the extreme. This last week, uh, in the Kyle Rittenhouse case, that has become the main topic um, in our country. Um, but did you hear about the 
about the um, the warning they had over at St. Paul's on Friday. Yes. Thursday or Friday, right? Yeah, about three blocks south of St. Paul, right? Three or four blocks south, Cape Clay Namely. No, I was at the grocery store. I'm like, oh, that's like right by St. Paul. My kids are there. I hope they're okay. Did you get a warning on your phone? Yeah. Because I didn't get any warning, and Sue got one on her phone. I think they ping all of the towers within like a two or three mile radius, just so it comes locally. How they do that, I would have to Google it. To <laughs> uh, right, Amber alerts, uh, stay in place warning, active shooter, things like that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, the things that they're able to do with technology. So any other ways about the hurting and harming? Um, well, let's talk about that. Uh, let's read the following Proverbs, if you would, uh, because this is going to help us define um, what we think about protection of life. Um, the, other, the other point when we think about protection of life also comes uh, with, from the unborn as well. And um, that I think has played a bigger role in our society over the last 60 years, right? Not only the debate leading up to Roe v. Wade, but now how it's played out um, since that was enacted. Um, and it will continue to be debated. Uh, if you don't value life as a society, um, you can say to someone else, then your life is worthless, we don't need you. Older people in hospice, um, you know, practicing euthanasia, um, abortion. Uh, we think about it from uh, fertility in uh, parents trying to have children. Um, there are so many different um, angles to the fifth commandment of sometimes controversial issues uh, that certainly can uh, play itself out in our society. And then also, things that Christians uh, might be concerned about. What is your point about the fertility? So the, the point about the fertility is when you harvest eggs, for example, mm -hmm. or sperm, and you put them together, there might be the chance, and I'd have to read up on the fine details of it, but... Oh, we got our kid. Now what do you do with the other eggs? And is destroying them, okay? When you talk about, here's the line, God says, you know, at conception. But you don't put them together until you're actually going to insert it in the womb. Correct. Uh, if you just have frozen eggs, is that an issue? Um, that is one of the things that I would say is up for debate. Yeah, it might not get talked about in our lesson today, but that's also part of the reason why I brought it up now. Um, God doesn't speak definitively on each of these things, but he allows us to use, um, use our, our mental function and capacity to um, not rationalize, but reason with Here's what God says. Now, how do I apply it to my life? And what's your motivation? Right. Capital punishment is another one I've almost forgot. You know, when it comes to is that just or unjust? Uh, war is being just and unjust. Uh, I think the list of, you know, how you value life um, is a rather long one. Do you think that there's a greater value on the bottom line of money and what's the most cost effective versus? Life? M many people, yes. When you look at businesses, there are things that are destroying people, and yet they don't care what makes me money. And that's where you could get into the debate over so many different industries. Uh, what is TikTok doing to our children? 
for example. Well, what is this? Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. I've seen it's it. a way for young people to communicate that is does not leave them with high self-esteem. Is that where they show you? Um, I don't know if you can or not. I don't know if that's regulated. Uh, I think on Snapchat they can. Where So Snapchat's concept is you can send a message to someone else. They can view it for five to 10 seconds, whatever you set the length on, and then it disappears forever. But it doesn't disappear. It's saved on someone's hard drive somewhere. Snapchats. So then what is TikTok? Right? It's kind of... um, people are recording music videos and the like, and then social media sharing them with others. And it might even just be little snippets. A little bit like YouTube only. Sure. A more specific. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's 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 very much a video sharing uh, type of thing. So I'm gl I'm glad I don't have to wait through that. So here's my dilemma. As a pastor, we want to reach more and more people. But can you or how do you use any of those platforms for good? Um, I've made the conscious decision of, you know, like even Facebook and Instagram, that's a necessary um, evil, so to speak. But some of the others I'm not going to get into um, just because at this time it's not necessarily worth it. Um, we can reach people in other ways and still be just as effective. Right? Think if TikTok had more Jesus or Snapchat had more, that would be a good thing. That's true. But someone else can, can do that. Stuff that's on there. But a majority of the stuff that is on there, um, when you put something on, are, are people tied, are they equating some of this? Or Yeah. I have yet to meet a pastor who is doing it successfully in their church. So until that time, <laughs> I will learn from them. That's where you go find the useful. Yep. Um, I don't think anybody ever goes into those things for anymore. I tell you. They left it when their moms and dads started going mm -hmm. on. <laughs> yep. Facebook renamed themselves Meta because I think they want to uh, have a better image of themselves. Um, so we have our Bibles open to Proverbs 4, um, 14 and 19. Uh, one of you want to start reading? Sure. Okay, go ahead. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your own way. For they cannot sleep till they do evil. They are robbed of slumber till they make someone fall. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Okay. Does it uh, mince words? No. <laughs> Uh, Psalm 1 says, blessed is the one who meditates on God's word day and night. And it also says, right in Psalm 1, do not stand in the seat of sinners or in the way of mockers. Um, Be careful who you associate with. Exactly. Avoid it. Don't go on it. Or turn away from it. Okay. Um, any other highlights there? How about the last verse? Of what it equates the, the path or the way of the wicked to. It's almost like they can't help themselves. They're just admired and addicted to it. What does the NIV say again, the first line of 19? But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. Okay. Deep darkness. I would like to do a word study on that. Because darkness. is it like the deep darkness that covered the earth um, at creation? void, empty. Because if that's the case, that makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? Your wickedness is void and empty of any sign of life. Avoid it at all costs. 
what could we equate it to in modern times? Uh, the black hole, the proverbial black hole, that emptiness and void in space. Okay, uh, 12 verse 26, I will read the next two. One who is righteous is a guide to his neighbor, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. And ours says, a righteous man is cautious in friendship. Hmm. I actually like this one better. I know. A one who is righteous is a guide to a neighbor. Kind of get the, the sense of... Um, I'm helping my neighbor. Whereas what you said kind of gives a different flavor to it, doesn't it? Like, so what would you say? How would you summarize this first? Uh, be discerning about who you associate with because you may think that you're okay, but you can get into the, the mindset of mm -hmm. that very slippery slope. That yep, God says bad company corrupts good character. Okay, 16 verse 29, uh, you want to read that um, there, Judy? A patient man has great understanding, but a quick-tempered man displays folly. I guess 16 Yeah, is that 16 29? I have something a little bit different. Oh, I Yeah, that was very close. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a different translation. We, we have two different ideas here. Mm -hmm. Okay, 1629. A violent man entices his neighbor and leads him down a path that is not good. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Is that spot on, though? Leads him in a way that is not good. Uh, 21 verse 10. Uh, would you read that, Jenny? The wicked man craves evil. His neighbor gets no mercy from him. Don't, don't expect the benefit of the doubt from him. Yeah. How about 28, verse 28? Let's read that one. Would you read that, Judy? When the wicked rise to power, people go into hiding. But when the wicked perish, the righteous rise. How has God done away with wickedness in the past? What did he do at Sodom and Gomorrah? They perished. So God has a way of taking care of things, I guess, is the point that I'm getting to. Is that true? Of other world leaders that have died? He does it in different ways. Yeah. So Absolutely. He uses that evil to his purposes, too. That's right. Yeah. Why, why did this bad thing happen? Does God cause evil? Or does, does God allow it? Um, choose, choose your words wisely, right? Um, but God is going to take, he doesn't cause it, but he's going to take this evil thing or wicked thing and he's going to work it out for his good. Um, and for our good too. Um, there are a lot of biblical stories where uh, Naboth's vineyard, right? Um, Haman got hung um, because he coveted and tried to exalt himself, and the roles were flipped. Um, Absalom led a rebellion against King David. Um, that didn't work out so well for Absalom. Again, uh, the wicked, in the end, uh, will perish. Uh, one last one, uh, 29, and then verse 2 and 10. When the righteous increase, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule, the people groan.
Do you like our president, our leadership, or not? Has been the question, right? That in the last two years, all of America had the opportunity to say yes or no, or no or yes. Um, and it continues, oh, I didn't vote for that one. Um, but even in, in America, we've become more and more polarized on leaders, for example. Um, well, yeah, it's it, hard when leadership does everything that they're told to be lied instead of denied. Absolutely. And then you look at the difference between the righteous and wicked, it would be tough um, for us to say and judge people without being able to look into their heart. And only God can do that, right? Well, and I'm going to equate it this way. Uh, one of the books that I've read uh, calls it a heart of Saul or a heart of David in your leadership. What would we say about King Saul? He was nar narcissistic. Everything was always about himself. David um, was more of a man of humility. And at the same time, there's a little bit of Saul in every one of us. There's a little bit of the, the narcissist in every one of us that says, yeah, look at me. Life is all about myself. When that's not the case. So when it comes to righteous and wicked, we can look at other people's acts and say, that wasn't a good thing to do, or that was a wicked thing to do. Uh, but in the end, right, God is the one that's going to judge the thoughts um, and heart of all mankind. That's true. But there are some, there are some countries, you know, dictator-type countries, where it would be hard to believe that. <laughs> They're following after mm -hmm. Christ um, in what they do. I mean, the, the level of genocide, the level of corruption. That's right. The level of imprisonment of anybody who disagrees with you. That kind of mm -hmm. the yeah. Roots, uh, yeah. Yeah. So many, so many leaderships and. I imagine that just this last year and a half, two years of COVID has exacerbated a lot of that. And I'm just amongst the various people of different countries. Um, I'm going to summarize number four this way. Um, God says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man reaps, whatever he sows, then he will also reap. That's from Galatians 6, verse 7. Do you remember the phrase, crime doesn't pay? Sure. Right? Is that true? In the long run. Yeah. If you do the crime, you're going to do the time, is what, what they say. And it goes back to what we just got done studying, too, of like the heart of the righteous versus the heart of the wicked. God judges the hearts and intentions of all mankind. Okay, um, I'd like to take a look at uh, Matthew 5, if you would. And we want to ask this question, how does Jesus teach that it is possible to break the fifth commandment in thought and word, not only in deed? Got to pull that up here. Okay, uh, would you read that there, Jenny? You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, rock up, which is an Aramaic term of contempt, is an answerable 
is answerable to the Sanhedrin, but anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. Okay. What does God say to the anger on my heart? That's not good. <laughs> That's bad. You'll be subject to what? The fire of hell. And judgment. Yeah. Judgment, then the fire of hell, or vice versa. <laughs> if you think about it, it's bad. Um, oh, I'm so glad he died for my son. <laughs> I know. I think about when I think about the fifth commandment and I think about not only the deed or the action, which so many do, well, I haven't murdered anyone. Um, that's so not true. Have you had an angry thought towards your brother or sister in Christ or even your enemy or someone that you don't particularly like? Right? God equates that. And as Jesus says here, God equates that to murder. Anger, but just making preconceived judgments about people. Yep. yep. You know, you're just basing it on, on something other than what maybe truth or fraction. Mm -hmm. The way they look or the way they project. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's not fair. No. Okay. Um, any other questions regarding what we've studied here on the first page? I'd like you to do one last thing. Uh, take a look at Romans 12. And I see that I missed something. <laughs> I, didn't, I must have had it on the wrong page when I hit print. That's okay. So Romans 12, and then we'll look at 17 to 21. You want to read 17 to 19, Judy, and then I'll read 20 and 21. Some of the branches have been broken off. I don't think that's it. Uh, Romans 12. That's, I'm ahead of myself. Okay. Uh, verse 17. Romans 12. Okay. I see the 12. Page. <laughs> 17. Okay. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of the If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, Live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, with mine to avenge, I will be paid, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. What does it mean to heap hot coals on your enemy's head? Is it doing positive or nice things to someone who's not been so nice to you to, to turn them around? Correct. Out of embarrassment or shame? Or Why is he being so nice to me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I sit by a campfire and I look at hot coals and I think, Ooh, it's like burning hot coals on someone's head when I'm nice and kind. Yeah, it is. Here's a, here's a more subtle question. Mm -hmm. When it says, do not take revenge, my friends, what about enjoying TV shows that are, their whole theme is about revenge. It's like someone who is been misjudged or mistreated and they over time they plot to get back at, at the person. Yeah. Um, isn't that a little bit satisfaction when the bad guy gets it? Isn't that a little bit hypocritical of us to let the bad guy get it? In in that sense. Sure, absolutely. But there needs to be a villain. <laughs> yeah. Even in Disney movies. 
Yeah. Gaston. The beast couldn't be the villain, right? Gaston had to be. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts? Um, taking your neighbor's words and actions and keeping the eighth commandment, I think, is the precursor to keeping the fifth commandment. If you take your neighbor's words and actions in the kindest possible way, you're going to do well in keeping the fifth thing. And listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's go to the prayer. Uh, dear Lord God, again, we thank you for your word. Um, these proverbs of wisdom uh, are meant to be a blessing to us. Uh, when we think about the fifth commandment, help us to uh, not hurt or harm our neighbor in their body, uh, but um, to help them and befriend them in every bodily need. Help us to also do this in um, thought, in word, and also in action. Um, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.